But let me, um, let, me, let me just very quickly outline a little bit about The Independent. It's a British-based newspaper set up 30 years ago at a time of intense political conflict in Britain. Um, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, hugely toxic, hugely divisive. And the idea was we were just going to tell the facts and let people have their own opinions. Um, at the, you, you know, we haven't uh, always stuck to that. We do have opinions uh, and we're on the side of... Um, uh, we're, we're on the side of most progressive causes, I guess. Um, one of the interesting things about us, since we went largely online, we found that more than half our readers are in the US. That's allowed us to have more than more staff than ever before here. I'm guessing about 25% of our staff are in the UK, in the US. My own experience in the United States, I've been here on and off for 20 years, um, back and forth with trips elsewhere and assignments elsewhere. Um, most recently in New York and now in Seattle. Um, Seattle's a fascinating place to cover the coronavirus because it was here that we had the first case back in January. It was where we had the first deaths. And of course, since George Floyd's death, it's also been a site of intense um, um, protest. And I got back from covering the protests in Minneapolis uh, at the end of, uh, end of May to to find that um, the protest here um, was in an area called Capitol Hill where protesters occupied the zone. It was called the CHOP, the CHAZ, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. And for about a couple of months, um, it, was, it, li it lived this kind of uneasy half-life where the protesters occupied it and it was pretty peaceful during the day and the police kept out of the way. There was some crime at night, not necessarily involving people involved in the protest, but it was used by the Conservatives, it was used by Donald Trump, and it was used by, I think, members of the police force who wanted to retake that area. On July the 1st, um, they moved in. I went to cover um, the, the operation to close that camp, and I was arrested, uh, even though I was displaying my press badge uh, and maintaining that I had the right to be there. Um, I was held about 10 hours, I was assaulted, I was handcuffed, I was put in leg irons. Uh, and for, a, you know, let's be honest about this, it was a great insight for a, for, for a reporter, but what a great insight into privilege and, and the privilege of being a middle-class, middle-aged white guy with a press badge. Tiny uh, insight into the sort of experiences, uh, far, far, far worse experiences um, uh, held the, the people of color, people without my perch undergo every day into this criminal justice system. So I was able to write about that. Um, I've since been out talking to, uh, to protesters again. And uh, I think Don word that, used that word intersectionality. It feels to me we're at such an intense time in the United States right now. We have the coronavirus we have uh, the election and we have the racial justice protests. Never, never has the time for independent, honest journalism been more important. And yet never perhaps has the threat to that journalism been greater because not only do we have the financial threat that Don mentioned, but we also have the threat of doing our jobs. And we have to assume that some of this comes from Donald Trump. There have been at least 50 journalists who have been arrested this year while covering protests. I go to Trump rallies. I guess I've been to 10 of them or 12 or whatever. And when the president gets up and sort of says, that's the media back there, and everyone boos, the first time you kind of laugh because you think, ah, oh, this is like some pantomime thing and everyone's booing and hissing. But the second and the third time, it sort of it starts to get more sinister. And when you talk to his supporters, and you know, I, I love going to rallies, no matter the candidates to talk to their supporters about what draws them there. But what I find so fascinating is they don't want to talk to me. So, oh no, the president says you're fake news and you're going to tell lies. I, you know, I have to convince them, no, I've come, I've flown in from wherever to, to, to talk to you. If I didn't want to do that, I'd just stay on, you know, watch it on CNN. So, but clearly that's having an impact. Whether I was arrested because of Donald Trump, I don't know, as people have pointed out, Seattle is a democratic controlled city, a democratic controlled, controlled state. But I think the environment, and I think this is an inarguably true, 
the, the environment against journalism has got far worse and far less pleasant.